I'm back, y'all, and I'm excited to share with you my thoughts on some of the offensive actions the Philadelphia 76ers could run in the upcoming season. Looking at the team's budding core, Brett Brown will certainly have a lot of options. So let's dive in. Looking at their new starting lineup, the 76ers will undoubtedly have more room to work with this season. According to my spacing rating, the Sixers' two most used lineups were above average in terms of spacing last season, but they still had room to improve. This season, after making a few assumptions on Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz, I found that the team's starting lineup should boast a spacing rating in the mid-70s. Pretty darn good. And given the increased spacing and playmaking around him, Robert Covington will be one of the primary beneficiaries. With the help of NBA.com slash stats, I estimated that only 13.4% of shooters were guarded more closely on their three-point attempts last season. Keep that in mind as I'll get back to spacing near the end of this video. Now, let's dive into some of my favorite actions that Brett Brown could run next season. There are, of course, hundreds of effective actions that I could have included in this video, but these are just some of my favorites. Let's start with some pick and roll sets the Sixers could run. First up is Fist Up Short, a play the Warriors have made famous. This play is especially lethal with a big who can roll downhill and catch lobs, and you could easily imagine Simmons throwing it up to Embiid for the slam. Last season, Brett Brown leaned on the 4-5 pick and roll quite a bit. Because most bigs aren't comfortable with guarding the ball handler in the pick and roll, this can cause strain on the defense. There's no doubt that Simmons and Embiid will hook up frequently in this setting. And we know that the 76ers love to use the elbows as an avenue to playmake. If we were to mesh this affinity for elbow touches with the 4-5 pick and roll, we'd have a play called Elbow Get. The Jazz have even incorporated pinch posts into this action, and with a lob threat like Embiid on the back end, it's a challenging play to stop. But Philadelphia's use of the elbows won't stop at elbow get. A play called Horn's Rip is one that constantly catches teams napping. With Embiid as the back screener, his defender is put in a tough situation because of his ability to pop out for the jumper. Next up is the dribble handoff. This will likely be a consistent theme in Brown's offense because of how deadly Simmons, Sarich, and Embiid can be in these situations. Watch the problem Embiid creates after the DHO. Nene doesn't want to leave Embiid, freeing up a driving lane for Stauskas. And the Sixers will also throw in a down screen before the dribble handoff to make it even tougher on the defense. This is called Chicago action, and it's a good way to get one big popping and one big rolling simultaneously. Look for DHOs into a ball screen as well. This gives the ball handler an advantage coming off the screens, and Fultz will likely feast in these pull-up situations. And knowing how eager Simmons will be to make plays himself, I'm excited to see the Sixers throw in some fake handoffs to keep the defense honest. Philly can also keep the defense honest by using the backdoor cut. After running Chicago a few times, don't be surprised if the off-ball defender begins to move to the top side of his guy, leaving the lane open for the cut. I've also picked out two actions from the Pistol series that would fit in seamlessly with the Sixers' personnel. Imagine Fultz passing ahead to Embiid here. Embiid is opened up by a rip screen from Fultz, and Simmons fires in the pass from the top of the arc. I mentioned fake DHOs earlier, and here's more of this keep action. This forces the defense to switch on the kickout, allowing the ball handler to attack. I've emphasized a lot in terms of the primary action, but what goes around elsewhere might be just as important. With Covington and Redick on the court, the Sixers have a plethora of options. And as usual, the Warriors are the model of excellence. Watch how off-ball screening action distracts potential help defenders here, opening up the floor for a drive. With two shooters spaced out on the weak side, I hope the Sixers prioritize off-ball screens like this one from Covington to force defensive miscommunications and create open shot opportunities. And Redick has mastered the art of working off the ball. 
Here, he demonstrates back action behind the pick and roll to open himself up. This weak side fill is similar to back action, but from a different location on the court. When Crawford tags the roller, he doesn't get back out to Covington to defend the three. With all of this spacing and creativity, Timote Luau Cabarro will have even more chances to find holes in the defense. His off-ball cutting is an underrated ingredient in Philadelphia's recipe for success. That's all I have for this one. A special thanks to Coach Daniel for allowing me to post videos on his channel, and to you, the fans, for your feedback and support.